video is called Kotaku just died short sort of all right so the title here seems kind of hyperbolic I guess but it's not even really clickbait actually because yo Kotaku what game is this kind of sort of just is this red died. dead and maybe the website will continue to function oh ages thank you so much for the sub thank you perhaps but the way Thank it is you for right 19 now, ages. that's over. And oddly enough, I actually have a pretty unique individual perspective Red on why. Mm. Here's a basic rundown before I go in-depth on what precisely this means for the website. March 21st, which is yesterday as of me scripting this, Jen Glennon, editor-in-chief at Kotaku at the time, abruptly resigned. Jen Glennon has a lengthy history working in the world of media. I really don't know much about her, so... Wait, her what? Job, is, is, an, is an Honestly, herb? I can't say. What does what? that mean? You mean like literally like a plant? Is that what they're saying? But this abrupt and unexplained decision quickly received context. See, Kotaku writers... Some personal news. I resigned from Kotaku and Jim Spanfiller is an herb. Yeah, what does that even mean? Is that like a new insult? Is that like a, like a soy insult or something? Like, what does that mean? Like you're like a plant? Because you're stupid? Like began losing their collective minds. I'll take a minute right now to clarify, that's very understandable. Losing your job is not an easy thing, especially when you've sunk months or it's years. It's a lame or uncool person. That's a lame insult, so. Years into building your position at a certain company, we should all be able to sympathize and have some empathy here. That's not something to celebrate at all. And while those writers have not actually lost their job currently, they're probably- Dude, what the heck? You can just like- Throw people off of like wagons in this game and steal their wagon? Probably going to. That's crazy. I'll explain that in a minute here. So Jen Glennon resigns sick. abruptly, and then both current and former staff at Kotaku start spilling the beans. I want to play that Gino game. Media has redefined the entire website content direction to focus. Wait, now what? Hold up. Staff at the site are expected to create fifty guides a week. Fifty. That's crazy. The uh, what? Means that GNO Media has reached. How can you even write? There's no way you can write 50 real guides in a week, because in order to make a guide, you have to have an in-depth understanding of something, and there's no way you have that much content in your mind without re without researching. With AI, you, with AI, you can. I mean, not you can't write good guides with AI. Does an AI have an in-depth understanding of like how to play the game as a player? How 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 would AI have that information if AI can't play? You know what? You, we can we can look later. We'll, we'll check later if we can make a guide with it. Focus now almost exclusively on gaming guides, not activism-based editorial pieces or politically laced op-eds, and they also so like um just some context so. I actually used to do games journalism. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I actually worked for a, um, I worked for a MMO website, you know, and, uh, I used to do five a day. That was like, my thing was five a day, but they were like basic bitch news articles, like really basic. Like I would sign up for like, uh, those mailing lists where like, uh, basically companies would like they have like these mailing lists and you could sign up for them so that like they send you they send you like press releases and you would just do the press release and you would just like kind of you know oh this new game came out and like you know it features it, it would be something like this it'd be along like one of the articles would be along these lines um new mmo uh new new mmo you know like angel sword just came out and it features like an in-depth crafting system and like eight classes, eight classes. And like, you can like dress up your characters really cute. It'd be something like that. It would just be like really basic, like information, like from the press release, just kind of like more digestible, like press release stuff, basically. And you would like, you know, you put the pictures, they, they usually send you pictures. You'd look up the logo, you put the logo on there and then you would like put some screenshots like that they send you. And, and that would be like the article. Right. So you can write like many of those. Like I used to do 25 a week, I think, of those. And it, it, it's not that hard to do that. I actually did do a couple guides um, just because I wanted to, not because um, not not because the guides were uh, I was told to do them. It's just because I wanted to do them. And actually, like uh, I made a guide on Fate Grand Order. And that was like one of my big articles back then. Implemented a quota 
of 50 guides per week, allegedly. That news is getting very mixed reception right now. I've seen everything from good, that's a better direction, GNO Media is a genius for doing this, all I the feel way like to the problem go, is, go broke. Uh, and even okay, I feel like the problem, I was just thinking about it just now. I think the problem is that it's not really games journalism. It's like opinion. It, it's a lot of opinion. It's a lot of opinion in politics. That like people, when they, when they want games journalism, they just want to know what the fuck's coming out. They want to know like what the fuck game is coming out, like what's good. That's what they want to know, right? But then like people just put like a bunch of drama into it. And I think that's the problem. The sky is falling. Who's going to tell the gamer chuds how wrong they are now? Ask different people about this and you'll get completely different answers because perspective here seems to be fully... De what is a chud? I feel like I've been called that before. What is that? Yeah, I've seen that before. What is that? Me? What, is, what does that mean? Dependent on whether or not someone liked the individual politics of the Kotaku writers. There was a singular political slant at that. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know like modern insults, man. Dude, what? Dude, I miss the simple days, dude. The simple days, we should just call each other. You, you just be like, you're a fucking bitch. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I just, I miss that. It's like, it's so pure. Like, you're a bitch. You're a whore. You're a cocksucker. Like, it's just so simple. It, like, I, I don't understand all this new stuff. You know, it's just like, it's too much, man. It's too much. Is it people are trying to sound like really sophisticated and stuff, right? Like, like using big words, you know what I mean? Like, well, you could just say bitch. I just don't get it, man. That outlet for many years, which is completely indisputable. Like, cocksucker is a big wor word. You could use the word cocksucker. It's pretty long. Right? You could just use that. Dickhead is a good one, too. Um, I like whore, personally. It's probably my favorite one, this whore. It just, it, it rolls off the tongue, like, really well. Like, whore. Like, you're a, you're a fucking whore. You know what I mean? It just sounds so good. What a good insult, man. Like, we don't need all these other ones, dude. And that simple litmus test will basically tell you whether or not someone is now celebrating all this or panicking over the decision by GM. Slut, I like slut too. Slut's, slut's good, but like whore sounds a little more sophisticated. Like slut sounds like really dirty and like really like it, 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 it sounds it sounds dirty and simple. But when you say like whore, you're a fucking whore. Like it just, uh, it's like butter. It's like butter off of the tongue. You know what I mean? Harlot is nice too. I like Harlot. But but the problem with Harlot is like not a lot of people know about that. Like, I mean, I mean, sure, there's a lot of people that know about Harlot, but it doesn't hit 100%. Like, whore. Everyone knows who the whore is. You know what I mean? Media to change the website's direction. Here's the fun part. It turns out, if you don't believe me, I'm about to show proof of everything I'm saying. It turns out, I'm actually. Yeah, like, what is Chud? Like, what is that? I don't even know what that is. Trog Troglodyte is too long, man. It's too long and too hard to say uniquely qualified to speak on this topic and also have literal years of data to back up what it's an acronym for cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers like that's lame like that's so lame i'm about to say see originally way back when the channel first got started if have you seen the show deadwood the swear the swearing uh in that show is not accurate it's modernized in the early days all i did was make video game guides I started with the division, nearly killed the channel outright when I tried to expand, but eventually I was. There's like another insult that like starts with an R that's like pretty good, but like, uh, I mean, I don't really mind mind using it, but like, I just I don't want to say it like willy nilly, you know what I mean? I gotta save it for like a good time. Oh, cunt is good too. I like that one. That's a good one. Basically, every single popular game release that happened. Destiny 2, Red Dead Redemption, even Fallout 76. Yeah, the R one is like special. It's like uh it's it's uh <laughs> it's special. But uh like I you gotta save it for like a good time. You know what I mean nowadays? Uh before you could just throw it out all the time, but like th there's a little there's not as much ammo in that one now. You have to like kind of reserve. Cyberpunk, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Assassin's Creed, Borderlands 2, even more recently Elden Ring. I went from guides in one. You don't want to go nuclear option like off of the start, you know what I mean? in any game and i have the data now because of that to properly evaluate this whole situation if you listen to a political activism oriented gaming journalist right now the sky is actually falling on their head 
This decision is the worst thing in the world. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's a completely idiotic thing to do. How could what like like go learn about games? Oh no, I, I don't want to learn about games. <laughs> like they ever think, that bro? Go. Can you imagine this? Like your work is like you know, go play games and make guides. Oh my! Then I'd have to play games. Audience would go there for gaming guides to Kotaku, and it's an obvious blunder by GNO Media that can't be allowed to persist unchecked. However, as someone with close probably my favorite insult right now is pot liquor, but like you can't really like like the problem with pot liquor is it's not universal, so it's like people don't really know like like it, it's not it's not a universal insult. You know what I mean? to a decade of YouTube experience, tens of millions of views attracted through the production of gaming guides in particular, and all the data at my disposal, at my fingertips, to demonstrate this, let's take a look at the reality of the situation. Not the blind celebration, by the way, because someone thinks the writers they politically disagree with are going to lose their jobs, which they probably are. And not the brain-dead outrage, because a company made a calculated fiscal decision to uh -huh. step away from antagonistic, politically motivated content. Let's look at what's really happening, okay? Okay. Like the actual down-to-earth reality, not one side or the other of an extreme. Here goes. Gaming guides are absolutely a viable genre of content. And y yeah. What, what do you mean? They... I have a couple of Prima strategy guides. You guys remember the Prima strategy guide? A couple of those. Of course it's viable. And here's a few examples. This is a five minute, 50 second video I did for Red Dead Redemption 2. Holy fuck. It is incredibly You know the best thing about this too is all residual. You just keep making money. Simple and merely showcases the location of five pieces of writing, I think, from back then. You guys want, want me to tell you something I like really fucking hate about YouTube, actually? It's a little bit of a little, little slight tangent, but um, YouTube... Um, Honestly, there are two strats. One is you make giga, like super high quality stuff and you release like one video a month, like uh, Smarter Every Day or something like that. Or you just go fuck it and you just take the buckshot out and you just spray. You spray and pray. Uh, explaining how if you go and to all you just these get spots, residual you income an basically that pretends to be a vampire. This took me less than one hour to make and has garnered well over a million views since originally published. In the past 365 days- You did that in an hour? It took you an hour to, to shoot that and write the script for it? Dude, you're a, dude, this guy's a legend. What the fuck? It took him an hour? Dude, you should make a guide on how to make guides in an hour. Days, so one year. It's gotten 200,000 views. And this means that less than one hour of work six years ago is still producing reliable viewership, subscribers, and revenue today. That's this guy's basically crazy. the holy grail of content creation. It's called evergreen. Yeah, ever evergreen content. And it holds true regardless of medium, because articles with written content can do precisely the same thing. I used to do a lot of these before. Um, I, I I would make guides for games that uh, had nothing to do with the patch. So like there'd be like uh, certain things that you can patch out of a game, right? Uh, but before I used to make uh, these guides that taught you really uh, kind of strategic things about the game that had nothing that like no matter how the game got patched, they would still apply. And uh, a lot of those videos had pretty good views like throughout the life of them. Sometimes even better. Well, some of you might be thinking, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is a crazy high-profile release that doesn't happen every day, so it's not a repeatable thing. And you'd be right, except for the part where you're completely wrong. See, that pattern is actually easy to replicate if you are able to quickly target new games and produce at least passably helpful content. Here's a tips video mm -hmm. for a video game called Frostpunk. Incredible game. It's about to get a sequel, actually, which is exciting. But it's nowhere near as popular as Red Dead Redemption 2. Still... A simple five tips and tricks video I produced also about six years ago has continued to garner viewership this entire time. Yeah, see, they make like little, little bits of money. Like, there'll be like a small amount of viewers, like every, every day, you have like a couple of viewers on that, right? But then you have a hundred videos, right? So it's like multiplied by like the 100 videos that you have. And like every new video that you make is like an asset, right? 
the, their, their assets because they keep making you money. Collectively reaching over 250,000 people and serving as evergreen content with drip fed income and subscriber growth. See, this pattern is actually the norm. I did very few guides mm -hmm. for Monster Hunter. It's like making a Bitcoin farm in, 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 uh, you know, games. When you like invest, you, you invest on like passive money generation. It's just like that. This is like how like you make all, you make pretty good money in life, by the way. It's like this literal exact same thing, but like you could do it with like stocks or <laughs> actually we literally just talked about it. You know, like, you know, when people like become landlords and they like invest money into a house and then they rent said house out, it's the same thing. It's like, residual income that you have invested into world when it initially came out but when i did things like this happened how to get zora magdarosa gems and armor and this content is extremely simplistic mind you merely explaining how to get one resource with one method in a popular video game right it's really simple hundreds of thousands of views hundreds of dollars consistent subscriber growth let me just rapid fire these again i have a lot of examples to draw from Top five tips for cyberpunk, million views, evergreen. Tips for Borderlands, evergreen, less than 400,000 views, maybe two grand over four years. Damn. Tips for Red Dead 2, still going. Fishing guide for Red Dead 2, still going. Tips for Bannerlord, still going strong, evergreen. Tips for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which isn't even the most recent game in the series anymore as well. Consistent viewership, thousands of dollars over the span of years. Even a game like Kingdom Come Deliverance, Best Gear, an Alchemy Guide, and a money-making video, among others, all continuing to gain viewership even now consistently as they grow the channel and earn me money well after the fact. This guy's a legend. The list goes on. This is really just a snapshot. I have a ton more data at my disposal to prove this, but I'm just trying to condense it as much as I can. But the point is to demonstrate here that guide content is a consistent and reliable method of attracting viewership even more than half a decade after whatever game it is initially. But the problem is, I, this is, okay. This is the problem with this whole thing though, is I think Kotaku has dragged their reputation into the fucking mud so hard that I think people will not trust their guides. Cause gamers have, uh, gamers have a thing where they, they, they only will listen to people that they trust. And if they don't trust like, Kotaku anymore, they're not going to trust any of their guides. They're not even going to look at them. So, actually came out while the channel has completely changed direction since then as well. See, I've done the grind where you produce guides, and I've also done the more journalistic thing, I guess, where I publish my opinions about games or topics instead of giving information on them, even though that still does often contain a lot of information. But still, I can tell you with no shadow of a doubt here, possessing all the data necessary to prove my point. I would not trust AI guides, so it's two problems. Well, I mean, it depends how you make the AI guide, right? Like you can make you can make a guide with AI, that's good, but you have to still have knowledge on the game in order to do it. The video game guide content is much more consistently profitable than op eds or think pieces or whatever. That's true. What Julio said is that audio journalism and guides are better than written because they can be passively consumed. Yep. Whatever the fuck Kotaku writers have been doing for the past few years. To be clear, the like the amount of times I've like listened to a guide, like I, I'll, I'll be going to sleep and then I'll put a guide on and then like I'll fall asleep. I'll, I'll kind of like fall asleep, like listening to like a guide. Like a lot. I, I do that like all the time. The more highbrow journalistic stuff certainly can be a hit sometimes periodically. I have videos that do exceptionally well that discuss things like TikTok and social. If a video has AI reading it, I stop watching it. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on the AI, right? Right, Sada? Like, what if you can't tell? Social media, AI, general technology, and more. The video game guy. Oh, oh, you're talking about, but you know what, though? I, I do, you know what? I'm going to take that back. I understand what you mean, though, Sada. I have heard those videos that are like, you click on it, and it's like, it's like, top 10 ways, top 10 top 10 guns that you can get in hell divers it's like sounds like that and i'm like fuck that i turn that shit off immediately <laughs> I, I know what you mean i know what you mean are an extremely reliable source of viewership if you can produce it's got that TikTok voice you know oh fuck quickly and if you can properly fill them with information this decision by gno media is not some misguided blunder yeah i mean you have to make it like kind of uh i don't think it's the ai I don't think it's the AI 
voice in general. I don't think it's AI voices in general. I think it's the way that they do them that makes people not want them. Regardless of what these writers are screaming about on Twitter, this is not some horribly ill-informed mistake. This is a viable business decision that can absolutely result in high-paying, consistent traffic. Dude, I gotta play this game. You just punch people out and stuff in the streets. This is great. And a lot of frequency. Holy fuck. Extremely reliable profits, really, for Kotaku, if, if it's executed properly. I don't know if it will be executed properly, but as a basic foundation, it's a viable strategy. However, and this is a big however here, that doesn't mean that the whole situation is good, and it doesn't mean I'm sitting here happy. See... Part of the shift is requiring 50 guides per week from each of their staff writers. And yes, I That's know insane. my audience dislikes That's an insane amount of guides. Kotaku and their writers significantly. But let's keep our feet firmly on the ground here and not lose track of reality. If you don't actually play the games, um, it is way harder to write those guides because you're going to have to play the games. So it's like writing 50 per week, not including playing time and research time. Simply because we disagree with them. 50 guides per week? That's just untenable. That's completely impossible, impossible to do. Yeah. It effectively forces them to plagiarize. See Dude, hold up. What if they're doing this on purpose to purge the people? They're trying to pur dude. Can, that's my conspiracy theory. Is that they're 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 doing it to purge the people that work there to be like to give them like a task that's so fucking impossible that they quit. Guide content success is directly proportional to its speed and its relative information. You have to be quick, and you have to put things in that players genuinely want to know but don't already know. Do that, and you're golden, but you cannot possibly do that yourself, at least not properly. Fifth. Oh my god, Leaflet dude. menace, leaflet menace, leaflet menace. Yo, Midnight Assassin, thank you so much for the sub. Thank you. Thank you for two months. What if... Oh, oh my god, dude. I just thought of it, dude. I just thought of it. Here's my here's my conspiracy theory, all right? Leave that conspiracy theory. It's because the people all of the so Kotaku is probably I'm going to I'm going to venture guess and say that Kotaku is probably saturated with um you know the How do I how do I say it? It's probably full of, yeah, like uh, rainbow hair people, like who, like, if you try to, like, fire them, they will bring up a stink no matter what the reason is. You know what I mean? So, like, if you try to, like, fire them, they will say that you're firing them for reasons that are actually not what you're firing them for. And then they will get you in trouble. Do you see what I'm saying? They'll be like, oh, you're firing me because I'm a woman. Right? So, like, it's harder to, it's harder to fire. This is the irony. It's actually harder. Like, if the person was, like, just a dude, you could fire them fucking easy. But I think if it's not, it's harder because what they'll do is they'll say like, oh, you're firing me because I'm like a member of this marginalized group. And then that turns into a lawsuit. Do you see what I'm saying? So if they make the job so fucking hard, so fucking hard and so objective, right? Like saying like 50 guides, it's a very objective measure, right? So that can be applied to everybody. So if you do it that way, either A, they quit on their own, or B, you can fire them. And then when they bring it up and say like, oh, you did it because I'm, I'm a minority, you can say like, no, I did it because you didn't make 50 guides. And this was applied to everybody in the company. Do you see what I'm saying? Because like this is absolutely 100% a thing. Um, I know a person, like I know of a person who got fired before from their job. And so, 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 so they, uh, they, uh, I have to change the story a little bit because I don't want to like make it obvious I'm talking about a specific person, but there was a person who got fired, right? Because they, uh, 
they they essentially they they uh they did something um they called like another employee like a bitch in front of in front of a customer right where like there was a person that was a lead and then the lead basically told their their like employee their lower rank employee uh yeah you're a bitch like in front of like a customer which you like you you shouldn't be doing that as a lead right so they tried to fire the person who was a lead but then the lead person said yeah well you're doing it because i'm gay so like they had already fired the person and then the person basically like said oh yeah you're firing me yeah it's because i'm gay and then so they're like oh oh just kidding just kidding you're rehired this actually happened too like i i remember this happening this is this this is real i'm not making that up that actually is a thing that happened the times per week because there's a lot more that goes into it right you actually have to spend the time to find the information to put in there yeah because they, they don't want to deal with it like the hr hr got scared as fuck right because hr doesn't want to get into a lawsuit right so they're like, okay fine fucking like just come back right you're whatever just come back plagiarize it so like they're basically being forced to plagiarize with that. And, and and the sad thing is, the sad thing here is I think ironically, it's going to make it harder for people to get hired that are like actually truly marginalized. It's going to actually be harder for those people to get hired because of stuff like that, which is just the, the fucking ridiculous clownness of the whole thing. Criteria. It basically means that writers are liability to take information that exists already from other outlets which I guess was kind of insinuated by GNO media already, like the aggregation side of things. They would regurgitate things that exist elsewhere, which depletes the value of... Awesome, Rich. That article and the article it's based on already. Or stretch out what they find into multiple articles instead of one highly packed, information-dense write-up, which more than likely destroys the potential for this shift to actually help Kotaku from a business perspective and makes this whole thing a lot more likely to fail. See, my guess, and it's a fairly accurate guess here based on context, at least in my opinion, this is an excuse to fire everyone. The fundamental business decision to shift over and focus on guides uh -huh. is valid and do not let a single journalist tell you it's not. They simply don't know what they're talking about here or their critical thinking is obviously clouded by anger right now. However, requiring 50 guides per week is not valid, and the only actual purpose of that would be to overwhelm the writers to a point yep. where they can't keep up and then exactly. just fire them. That, in my view, is extremely stupid. I know some people will celebrate this and say they're getting what they deserve, and I understand that mentality, but guys, jacking up the requirements of a job to be impossible, just so you have an excuse to end someone's employment is like super fucked up. Yeah, we can it disagree is. with someone politically. It is super fucked up. I agree. Completely shafted by a greedy company. So I hope that everyone watching is able to make that distinction here and now. It is completely valid to shift Kotaku in the. Okay, hold up real quick. I have to think about it. So it is kind of fucked up, but at the same time, like. They kind of started it, you know? Like, I don't know, man direction of gaming guides these whining screeching i'm sure there's a lot of people that are caught in the crossfire here that had nothing to do with it now they're like also stuck with the same requirement because again you have to like apply it evenly otherwise you know you can go you can get in trouble journalists don't have a leg to stand on disputing the validity of that decision but requiring them to basically plagiarize or produce horrible content just to keep up with that quota that is idiotic it really is and either the fuck can go fishing in this game too dude this game is legendary i need to play this it means that the company is screwing them over on purpose Guys, remind me to play this game wonder when it comes to content pacing my guess they're creating a reason to fire people as they execute this shift but with two sides hell bent on proving the other side wrong it felt like a good idea to look at the situation and calmly explain that both you can kidnap waifus in this game too you can collect waifus sides are in fact wrong the journalists are completely full of shit in their complaints about the basic decision making. This is a valid and potentially highly profitable shift to make. But the weekly requirements really are a complete disaster in their current form and should not be defended as a great move to salvage the sinking ship. Kotaku just died, not as a general publication necessarily, but as an avatar of let me push my ideologically driven opinions on you ignorant viewers, which was the consistent atmosphere it managed to cultivate for years. Right? That's just 
That's what Kotaku was. It was. See, the thing is, is like I know these people are like actually. I like. I I don't think it's fair to say like these people aren't gamers because they do play. Sorry, they do play games. Like fuck! How did this happen? I I I need, I need to do research. Like, how did this happen? Like, how did this whole thing? Where's the intersection? Is it fucking Tumblr? It's probably Tumblr, man. All the gamers suck, and our audience are losers and no, idiots. they do. They do play games. They just don't play the games that most people play. And look how wrong they are. And this is what you should think. And this is what I think. So like, it was just, it was so. I don't know. It was so politically driven, and it just it came through in every aspect of their writing. That seems to be legitimately dead as their parent company shifts in a new but completely understandable. It's while it's not illegal to fire people for not meeting impossible. Why would that be illegal, Max? I should be like like the truth is I should be able to fire people for whatever fucking reason I want. It's my money. Even if the requirements they've implemented while doing so are extremely bad and will probably, if left in place, make the whole thing fail. That's it. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have a channel merchandise line that's open till April. Am I 10th. fired too? After that, the no, you're not. Hey, what's up, IPN, dude? How's it going, man? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, that's interesting. Looks like looks like Kotaku is uh is about to get a about to get a makeover. Uh, here I'm gonna link the video. This is link the video. This is by Oprah S. 